I'm delighted to have been invited by Crescent Festival of Contemporary Irish Music to give this lecture recital on the Ross Tapestry Suite. The Ross Tapestry Suite is a series of 15 solo piano pieces commissioned by the New Ross Piano Festival in response to the Ross Tapestry. So there's a lot of information in there uh, and we're going to unpick it a little bit. Um, the Ross Tapestry itself is an older institution. It's, it goes back into the last century, I believe. It's about 20 years old now or so, or 25. And to give us a little bit of background into that, I'm delighted to be joined by Connie Tantrum, who, along with myself, founded the New Ross Piano Festival in 2006, but who has a very um, deep involvement with the Ross Tapestry. So Connie, thanks for joining us, and maybe just give us a little bit of background into the genesis of the Ross Tapestry itself. Well, what happened was that in 1998, we had a new rector, and he discovered that his church was built in the nave of a very large Norman church ruin. And so he decided he'd do the same as the Bayer Tapestry and get some tapestries which told the history of the Normans because he felt it wasn't known. And so he got, um, he got the ICA and other people involved in the planning of some story about the Normans. And in the end, they designed between them 15 panels which would tell various aspects of the story uh, because of course they came in into County Wexford and one of the most important nights sometime after they arrived was William Marshall and William Marshall built New Ross as his port for taking imports and exports so he's really important so these 15 panels tell the story largely of the William Marshall connection because he then built the church in our town, the one that was a ruin. And so over the years from 1999, when he got sufficient money, he, they started the ICA mostly um, volunteering. They started stitching the storyline. The storyline was uh, painted uh, after much research by Anne Burnsoff and it was her daughter who was uh, qualified in textile stitching who advised the ICA volunteer stitchers and of course that group expanded and eventually the 15 are almost complete this is 22 years later. One of them is still not completed, but it's within that much of being completed. And they're absolutely stunning. They're enormous. They're six foot by four. They're beautiful colors. They have been stitched, you know, just so meticulously by the women, mostly women, during this time. And they have been on exhibition since 2007. And just tell us, Connie, a bit about where they're exhibited. They were originally meant to hang in the church itself, I, I believe. Yes, I should have said that. The rector wanted them to be hung in the church because that would have, it would have been appropriate. But they were just too large and also quite difficult to hang from the balconies. It wouldn't have been possible to see the detail. Hmm. It, uh, it was a tricky situation. And after much discussion and a certain amount of grief, really, we were sad that this didn't happen. They went on public display uh, down on the quay in New Ross. And at the moment, this is Christmas 2020. At the moment, they are sitting in Kilkenny Castle where they are on loan for two years. And after that, they will come back to New Ross and there's a special building uh, being renovated for, to be a Norman exhibition center and we feel that our tapestries will be the centerpiece of that. Wonderful. So it's great. Yes, it is. Yes. And um, then next came along the New Ross Piano Festival, which we founded together with the Committee of Music for New Ross back in 2006. We had our first festival in September 2006, and um, it developed into, into an annual event with Irish and international pianists mostly. And as it went on, we were I suppose my idea as artistic director was to come up with bright ideas for um, who we would present. And you do. Well, I try. 
um, what music we'd present and who we'd present to play it. And of course, every now and again, we would think about commissioning new music. And um, like all good ideas, this very simple idea just came to me all of a, all of a sudden one day. And I remember the day I said it to you. And you said, yes, of course, well, why, why, why would we say no to such a great idea? And the idea was quite simply to commission uh, a solo piano piece from a different Irish composer for each of the 15 panels of the tapestry. Because in the meantime, of course, I had become aware of the Ross tapestry. I'd, see, I'd seen the exhibition. I was very struck by the, by the vibrant colours uh, of, um, of the different tapestries. And I love its, its subtitle, A Tale Told in Thread. And it really is that each, mm -hmm. each single thread comes together to make this wonderful, wonderful story. Um, and so, yes, the idea then was to, to identify and to contact um, 15 different Irish composers from all different backgrounds, to also to line up the funding to see whether we could manage it and to work out how we would engineer it. And in the end, what we decided to do was to uh, commission five pieces for three consecutive festivals each. So rather than having 15 new pieces all in one, weekend which would be too much for anybody to take in and too expensive for us to afford uh, we decided to put five pieces in the 2014 festival five in the 2015 festival and five in the 2016 festival and um, it was a great um, challenge for me to to do this you know to think about composers to write to them to to explain to them about the tapestry to see whether they'd be interested in in responding to it in music around about five minutes of music um, to just to, to, to see the reactions and to, to, um, to, to see how they, how they reacted, first of all, to the task, but then also how they reacted to their individual uh, tapestry. And I'm just going to share my screen just to show viewers who may not be familiar with the tapestry. There's the, the first panel there, the Celts in an Island Fastness. And you can see all the different shades of green and white and and also what, what's fascinating about the tapestries, Connie, as well, I think we mentioned this when we were chatting, is the borders that are at the top and bottom of each tapestry, which tell a little side story or a commentary, if you like, on the, on the main action in, in, in the middle. Yeah, there are as many as a dozen and more sometimes, and each one is a story in the telling. It makes the tapestries a very interesting, uh, it makes for a very interesting visit. You know, especially with children, there's so many stories there. There really yes, are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, as we'll see later in my recital, uh, one composer picked up on one detail in in one border and just went into that particular um, story to 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 for, form his piece. Other composers went with the overall story. Other composers went off on a tangent re related to, but quite different to the material in the tapestry. And and that that was all very very fascinating. And um, also the, you know, the reaction I got from various composers um, to, their, to their different pieces. Um, the lovely thing was that many, many of the composers could actually come to the piano festival and be present for the premieres, the world premieres of their pieces. And the other lovely thing was that um, in many cases it was international pianists who were given the challenge of learning these pieces for the first time, obviously, playing them for the first time. And without exception, all of the pianists who we had booked for the festival, and we're talking about quite a significant number of important international pianists um, without hesitation said yes to the challenge of learning these pieces fitting them into their busy schedules and then um, performing them on the at the festival and the, the other lovely thing of course was that we were able to bring the original tapestry up from the exhibition center uh, the tapestry staff were very 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 helpful and cooperative and put on their white gloves and carried up these quite heavy um, tapestries and they were erected on easels beside the piano so that the audience could see um, first of all the tapestry and then hear the piece and they could admire the tapestries that during the interval at a safe distance and the whole thing made for a lovely um, sort of cultural marriage if you like um, between these two important cultural pillars of Neuros, the, the tapestry and the, and the piano festival. And we have a legacy too because don't forget we now made a CD of all those performances That's live, right. uh, of those world premieres and we've succeeded in printing the scores of all the new commissioned works. Yes, that has been the document, documenting of the project over the last few yeah. years, which has been in tandem with the Contemporary Music Centre, has been another interesting 
um, project for us to work on. And um, of course, the the game is also to get the pieces played by other pianists, which which is happening. There have been other performances by pianists in different parts of the world of these pieces, um, and we hope that they will grow legs and that people will become more aware of them. And it's through, I suppose, events like this lecture recital that people can become more aware of these pieces. So, um, Connie, thank you very much for joining me for this introduction. And we'll move on, I think, to the second part of the lecture recital, which is at the piano. That's a pleasure. So we now move to the second part of my lecture recital about the Ross Tapestry Suite. And at this point, I also want to acknowledge the um, extraordinary support of the Arts Council, who uh, gave us funding at the New Ross Piano Festival to commission two of the three volumes. So 10 of the 15 pieces were helped by the Arts Council. Uh, the other five we dug into our own resources for. But the Arts Council have been there for the New Ross Piano Festival right from the start. And that should be acknowledged and also in this very difficult year of 2020 they also stood by us and honoured our grant so they are to be acknowledged. I also want to acknowledge the support of the Contemporary Music Centre in Dublin who have embraced this project as well and in fact um, they are the ones who are selling for us the um, not only the CDs which I mentioned earlier which Connie mentioned in our earlier part this is the CD of which we're very proud um, produced by Ergodos. These are live performances from the New Ross Piano Festival of all 15 pieces with a, a huge range of different pianists from myself to Josef Moog, the German pianist, Beatrice Beirut from Switzerland, Lise de La Salle from France, Olga Scheps from Russia, Germany, Cédric Tiberguin from France, Daria van den Berken from the Netherlands, Sean Morgan Rooney and Jonathan Morris of course from Ireland. And Natalia Milstein from France, the winner of the Dublin International Piano Competition. Nicolas Ongelich, the great French pianist, uh, American French, really. And Piers Lane, Australian British pianist. So you can see the huge range of um, pianists who are on the double CD recording, beautifully produced with some lovely um, reproductions of, of various panels from the tapestry, which you can vaguely make out there. But there, there is more information on the CD available at neurospianofestival.com and at the Contemporary Music Centre's website at cmc.ie. Uh, the CMC have also been very helpful with the production of our sheet music of the Ross Tapestry Suite. Uh, here is uh, volume two, which is, has got a lovely uh, cover and a lovely back to it with um, color, uh, full colour reproductions of details from the tapestries. And then inside you have the, the sheet music of, of five pieces per volume. So this is volume two, it has number six to ten. We also have volumes one and volume three will be out in the new year. So it's a project that we have been documenting, although the pieces were commissioned and premiered between 2014 and 16. It's only in the recent last two or three years that we've managed to get all the different pieces published and documented and recorded. So it's an ongoing um, project. And the one thing that hasn't yet happened is a complete uh, live performance by one pianist or by uh, even by a group of pianists all at one sitting of all 15 pieces, which would be, of course, a mammoth undertaking. Um, it would take about an hour and a half. And we had planned this for this year's Crescent Festival at Wexford, but circumstances intervened, but we hold our breath and we hope that 2021 might bring better things. And what better way for me to spend parts of lockdown than delving into these pieces and learning some of the ones that I haven't yet played. Um, well, there are quite a few left that I haven't played. So um, that's a, a great um, project. And I would urge any young pianists watching this to maybe have a look at the Ross Tapestry Suite. Some of the pieces are not hugely um, technically demanding um, and they would be, they, they'd be perfectly possible for, for um, some advanced students to, to tackle. So that would be great to, to have the pieces played um, more. Uh, in fact, one piece um, I wanted to just now maybe play some um, extracts from a couple of pieces and to give you a flavour for the different um, angles and attitudes um, that were taken by the various composers to their tapestry. I just wanted to, to start off with a little uh, extract from Gerald Barry's piece. He wrote the third piece. Uh, his tapestry was called Arrogant Trespass, the Normans landing at Banno Strand. And he picked up on, on, on one aspect of this tapestry, which was the, the waiting. He called it Midday. He gave it this extra title, Midday. And it's all about uh, the Irish watching and waiting for these Normans to arrive into the bay. And there's this huge sense of expectation 
and he writes at the start, standing still in the landscape, listening, watching, waiting, gently detached articulation, do not shorten silences, no pedal ever, keep your feet far away from them. So he's very definite. So the, the piece created quite a stir when it was um, premiered because it's full of these silences. It's also full of repeated gestures. So the same short musical gesture over and over again. And it, it almost sounds like you're listening to a stuck record at one point. I'm not going to play the whole piece because in fact Gerald has made it even longer in the meantime and it goes on for quite a while. Um, but I'm just going to play the beginning just to give you an idea of the atmosphere that he creates with this repeated feature. on it goes over and over again and later on then he, ch he changes the, the, the different repeated features but later on we have he writes horn one horn two so he's thinking orchestrally and it's very very simple um, motifs again that are just repeated <laughs> these things are repeated so it builds up this sense of heightened awareness of heightened expectation and really as i say in the, in, in, a, in a concert hall it does create quite a stir because people are saying is he really going to play it again and again and again and people are looking sort of saying is is this is, you know can this really be that he just it repeats and repeats again it becomes quite hypnotic uh, and actually there, i want to um to compare that then to something quite um similar in a way that happened with Sam Perkins' piece. And Sam responded to the tapestry about uh, the marriage of William Marshall and Isabel de Clare. And he thought a lot about this, and he thought about this marriage and the children that these people had and how it led to the dynasty of the of the McMurrah uh, Kavanaghs, of course, because they go back to Dermot McMurrah and all the way down to the to the Kavanaghs, who are still very much alive and well um, today in, in Boris in County Carlo. And he thought about all the generations, and he was thinking about um, the, the Russian Matryoshka dolls, so that each generation uh, f follows on. Um, and he actually gave the piece the title Nesting Doll. And he starts his piece with uh, a very small musical cell, and then there's very long silence, and then he modifies the cell ever so slightly. There's a long silence, modifies the cell a bit further. So he's picking up on this idea of, of the generations going down and down and down, slightly modified each time. And again, it creates quite an atmosphere. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't carry the repetition to the same extremes that Gerald Barry does. He then um, he keeps modifying to the, to the extent that it develops and then he changes the material. But it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a similarity I just wanted to, I wanted to pick up on. So I'm just going to play the opening, um, the opening page maybe of Nesting Doll by Sam Perkin.
in fact, you can see a complete performance of this piece on my own website. Um, or if you go to YouTube and do a search for Nesting Doll, uh, you can see the world premiere of this from the New Ross Piano Festival back in 2015. It's about seven minutes long, uh, and it's, uh, you can see how the piece continues. Uh, then I wanted to mention another piece, which was Jerry Murphy's piece, Battles in the Kingdom of Ossery. And he just picked up, Jerry picked up on one particular soldier at the bottom of the, of the, of the bottom border. One fallen soldier in this enormous battle. And of course, because it was 2014, he was very much thinking of the centenary of the First World War. And so he was widening the, 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 the scope of the piece, if you like, to, um, to bring in the futility of war and one lost soldier among millions. Um, and so he tries to capture the desolation of this one person who's lost maybe who's fallen off a horse and is dying, losing his life, and he sees his whole life pass before him. And so it starts with a very mesmeric and very uh, simple, in a way, technically, um, passage with a lot of um, chromatic dissonant um, tension going on between the two hands. Later on, then, it, it erupts into the actual battle, so we hear the battle. A uh, ferocious battle in the middle of the piece, and then at the end he returns to this soldier dazed, who perhaps loses his life, or probably does lose his life. So just to give you a sense of that piece, um, the fifth piece of of the suite um, by Jerry Murphy, I'll just play the, the again the opening uh, section. And then later on, the battle itself, a little bit of the battle. You can see the, the drama, the energy, the vigour, the thumping, the horses, the armoury, all of that. So that's just to give you a, a taste of that particular piece. Um, I'm now going to perform for you, um, for the third part, we're going to hear two complete performances of pieces from the suite, the pieces by Philip Martin and Marion Inglesby. And so now we will have the performance in full of two of the pieces from the Ross Tapestry Suite. Firstly, Gothic Glory, the building of the Parish Church of St. Mary's by Philip Martin which uh, is one of my favourites simply because it uh, tells the story of the building of St Mary's Church um, in New Ross, which of course is where we have the piano festival every year in September. Though of course they were building the, the Norman Abbey, which is now mostly in ruins, and we have our festival in the 19th century church. But uh, even so, it's right on the same spot and uh, gives it great immediacy to think that we're celebrating the building of this great, great building. Um, and what I like about the piece is that it's very clearly programmatic. You can hear uh, what's going on. At the beginning, we have these great majestic Gothic gestures up and down the piano, bells ringing. Then we can literally hear the monks who are being um, ordered by William Marshall himself. We can hear the monks chiseling away, um, putting um, block upon block, stone upon stone. Um, and then 
it's written in the score after that to prayer they're called to prayer and it gets very meditative and peaceful and and they say their prayers and it gets very dreamy at the end and fades away to nothing so um there's a real sense of story going through this piece uh, gothic glory by philip martin
so it seems almost a shame to speak at the end of that it's so quiet and peaceful composed in may june 2016 that was gothic glory the building of the parish church of saint mary's from the ross tapestry suite by philip martin commissioned by the new ross piano festival with funding from the arts council uh, and in fact it reminded me of another piece i just wanted to mention briefly um the piece by Eric Sweeney and very sadly Eric passed away in 2020 um, and uh, like Marion Inglesby and Jerry Murphy who also feature in the Ross Chapity Suite and Gronia Mulvey for that matter he had a strong connection to the southeast of Ireland where we have the festival and where the tapestry hangs uh, Eric although from Dublin lived for many many years in Waterford and he wrote the piece about the um, the Hook lighthouse and the evening sunset at, at Hook beautiful part of Ireland right down the end of that peninsula and similarly to in the Philip Martin piece that I've just played there is um, prayer there is uh, plain chant monks um, in, in, in the case of the Eric Sweeney piece um, he quotes from Ubi Caritas a beautiful plain chant hymn um, we have the waves lapping peacefully and then this this um, chant emerges over the waves. So I might just play the end of that piece, actually, since I'm here and since it is here uh, before I perform the next and the last complete piece for you. <laughs> And may Eric Sweeney rest in peace. And as I say, staying in the southeast of Ireland, I would like to finish with the performance of Marion Inglesby, a colleague of Eric, in fact, at Waterford IT. Um, Marion herself also a, a pianist and piano teacher um, and a wonderful composer. And this is her piece in response to um, the second last panel, the 14th panel, Normans and Irish Mingling at the Fair. Its title is Exchange. So it's a very um, noisy at times evocation of a medieval fair. Lots of haggling and jangling and all kinds of um, intrepid adventures going on here. So this is uh, to close my lecture recital uh, for the Crescent Contemporary Irish Music Festival, to whom I send my thanks and best wishes. Here we have Marion Inglesby's Exchange. <laughs> 